Hey there, I am Marup Said, a microbiologist and a science educator. Science is my passion and I'm here to share it with you. Anatomy and physiology topic on echocardiography. But before starting this video, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Let's start with the table of content. First, we will have a brief introduction about echocardiography, working principle, types, procedure of transthoracic echocardiography, interpretation, application, and lastly limitations. Let's start with a brief introduction of echocardiography. Echocardiography, commonly referred to as echo, is a non-invasive medical procedure utilizing high-frequency sound waves, ultrasound, to examine the structure and function of the heart. During the test, sound waves ranging from 1.5 to 7.5 MHz are employed to generate a 2D or 3D echocardiogram providing a detailed interval view of the heart. Echocardiography The echocardiogram offers valuable insight into various aspects of the heart including its size, valve dimension and function, chamber size, cardiac wall thickness, pumping activity, deduction of cardiac tumors and assessment of blood flow patterns. Cardiologists often recommend this procedure when abnormalities appear in the electrocardiogram or when symptoms such as shortness of breath, heart pain, angina or other indications of underlying cardiac issues are present. Key components of the echocardiography machine include a transducer or probe equipped with piezoelectric crystals for converting electric impulses into ultrasound and vice versa a central processing unit with a control panel to receive and analyze signals from the transducer, a monitor to display heart images, and a printer for producing electrocardiograms. Let's learn the working principle behind this echocardiography. Echocardiography is based on the use of ultrasound waves to produce an image of the heart's surface and internal structure. The piezoelectric crystals at the transducer transforms the electric oscillations into sound waves which then travels through the thorax up to the heart and interact with different types of tissues of the heart producing acoustic impedance. Due to this acoustic impedance, the sound from different parts of the heart gets reflected back producing echo at different intervals with different frequencies. The echo is again received by piezoelectric crystals at the transducer, which then transforms the sound waves into electrical signals and send them to the processing unit for analyzing the signal and production of an echocardiogram. If this video is helpful, don't forget to support my channel by subscribing. Types of Echocardiography Echocardiography can be characterized into various types based on the approach used to generate echocardiograms and the specific information required. Number 1. Transthoracic Echocardiography Standard echocardiography involves the placement of the transducer on the chest wall. Number 2. Transesophageal Echocardiography Involves passing a specialized transducer through the mouth to the esophagus for internal scanning. Number 3. Stress echocardiography combines ultrasound scanning before and after exercise or stress to assess the heart structure and function during physical activity number four intracardiac echocardiography intracardiac echocardiography an invasive echocardiography type utilizing a catheter with an ultrasound transducer inserted through the femoral vein to produce an ultrasound image of the heart. If this video is helpful in any kind of way, don't forget to support my channel by subscribing. Procedure of Transthoracic Echocardiography The examination involves the following steps. The patient lies flat on an examination table with the chest exposed to moving metallic objects and jewelry. Gel is applied to the chest 
to facilitate the transmission of sound waves to the heart. The echo probe or transducer is placed at a specific chest location emitting and receiving ultrasonic sound waves. The machine processes the reflected sound echo to generate the desired echocardiogram. Once obtained, the machine is turned off, the transducer is removed and the gel is wiped. The echocardiogram is then printed for interpretation by the cardiologist. Now let's learn the interpretation of echocardiography. A trained professional examines the ultrasound scan image for the following normal results. Number 1. Heart size. All four heart chambers, atria and ventricles are of normal size. Number 2. Wall thickness. Normal thickness of the heart's wall and spectrum. Number 3. Heart valves. Intact of normal thickness and functioning properly. Number 4. Blood flow. Normal and free flowing blood through chambers and valves without disturbance. Number 5. Ejection fraction. Normal ejection fraction typically 55% to 70% in adults. Number 6. Abnormal structures and fluid. Absence of abnormal tissue, clots, tumors, or fluid in the pericardium. Application of echocardiography. Echocardiography is utilized for various purposes including assessing heart function, ejection fraction, blood flow, and valve operation, diagnosing abnormalities in heart anatomy, structure, wall thickness, and septum, detecting pericardial effusion or abnormal tissue masses, screening for cardiovascular diseases, guiding intervention such as valve repair or surgeries, monitoring the heart's condition post-treatment or surgery. Unfortunately, there are few limitations to this machine. Limited visualization of internal heart structure. Echocardiography fails to generate a distinct visual image of the heart's internal structure, including coronary vessels, challenges in deep tissue penetration. In cases of patients with a larger body size, thick muscles, and increased fat layers, obesity, ultrasound penetration into the heart is hindered, resulting in restricted imaging depth. Lack of detailed tissue characterization. Echocardiography lacks the capability to provide in-depth information regarding tissue characterization within the heart. Inability to assess electrical heart activity. The electrical activity of the heart remains beyond the scope of assessment through echocardiography. And lastly, operator-dependent accuracy. The effectiveness of the test hinges on the proficiency of the operator conducting the procedure. So, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you so much.